So let's move to the patient, how the patient's positioned. So we want to have the maximum exposure visually to the patient. We also want to be able to have it so that when we place our luxator to or, or, or our elevator, either one to to progress to the apex down the groove that we will create around, let's say, this mandibular canine tooth, we want to be able to use that from our body to the patient's body in a forward motion. We don't want to be coming from up to down. We want to be coming from us to the patient so that we can put a little bit of forward force on that. So when you look at this, that satisfies that requirement quite nicely because the crowns are facing us. So in general, for most extractions, the, the position for the extraction most of the time, and I'm going to tell you the exceptions to that, but most of the time is with the crowns facing us. Here is an image of another tooth. Here's the exposure that we get when we do our surgical extraction. We go down to that middle mental foramen right there that's peeking out from underneath the gingiva where we've removed that vestibular bone. We've made our little grooves around that tooth and now we're ready to put our luxator in. But that if we put our luxator in, we're coming from the top and going kind of obliquely backward. We don't want to do that. We want to have the patient like this so that we can go from us to the patient directly. And I hope that gives you a really good idea about what we mean by that. So let's go back to the first molar, look at it as well. Here's the flap exposure that we would recommend for extracting that tooth. And you can see we've got great exposure. The crowns are facing us. We can see the bone really well. And so now we're prepared to remove the bone with our burr to facilitate uh, the next step in that extraction. With the maxillary molar, uh, maxillary first molar, we always do a vertical releasing incision. So this is not quite the crowns facing us as much as in the other ones, but you can see there it just kind of makes sense, right? I mean, we've got really good exposure. We can see where we've made that incision. We can see what we're doing. So the crowns are facing us somewhat, but they're pointing down a little bit. And then when we go to section that three rooted tooth, then the crowns are definitely going to be facing us because we've got to see where we place that cross-cut tapered fissure burr in order to section that correctly. So we make two passes. We make a pass there uh, where you see and then a pass between the two vestibular roots in order to section that. And that's the position that you would be in during that, that portion of the extraction. We also pretty much maintain that when we're doing our luxation and elevation. And then when we close, we're in that same orientation where literally the, the crown of that fourth premolar is pointing right at us, the palate's pointing right at us. So we have really good visualization in order to be able to close the extraction site when we, when we extract that tooth. Lastly, here's the maxillary canine, same deal. We've got really good exposure. You can see the alar ridge there, which kind of outlines the tooth root in the bone. Uh, we haven't removed any bone there, but you can see where that tooth root goes. We're all the way to the apex, so we've got great exposure there in order to facilitate that extraction. Now, that being said, the, the majority of the extractions that you do, you're not probably going to have the luxury of an additional staff member that's trained in veterinary dentistry that can help you to retract tissue. So it's good to learn to retract tissue by yourself with the exception of the small breed dogs and cats in the caudal oral cavity for closure or for root tip removal. If you're in that space, especially closing a quadrant extraction on that mandible or closing a caudal tooth extraction site, it's great to have a technician to be able to hold. This is my veterinary dental technician. She's a VTS in dentistry and one of the best instructors, if not the best in the world in, in veterinary technician dentistry. And she is holding this patient's 
comma shoe her back with her right hand and her left hand between her middle finger and her index finger, she's holding that mouth open and steadying the back of the, the head with her thumb and pointing that pretty much directly at me so it makes it a very easy closure. So take a screenshot of that if you, if you can. If you're on Mac, that's Shift-Command-3. We'll take a screenshot so you can save that and remember it. If you're on a PC, in the upper uh, part of the keyboard, there's a print screen button. Uh, you can hit that, and then that should save it to a folder on your desktop or somewhere else if you designated somewhere else to save that. And there'll be some other times where you're going to want to take some screenshots. So a uh, lot of information here, a lot of things that you'll want to remember. So this taking screenshots is kind of an easy way to take notes. So I would recommend that you do that. And that way you'll have those to keep and save and refer back to.